Good morning. Good afternoon. Lovely to see you all. I thought you, I thought I'd give you a display of our uh, our mantelpiece joy and Noel. Anyway, it's that time of year, isn't it? Christmas time, Advent. It's getting closer. Doesn't time fly? Where is this year gone? In a sense. But anyway, thank you for joining me today. Wherever you are in Greystones or wherever you are in the world, you are very welcome. As we have a little reflection on on our world, on our lives, and on this time of year. This time of year we get lots of things through the post, don't we? Often. Got something through the post yesterday. And it was uh, something that I've been waiting for for a while. Um, I've been using a little microphone that a friend from another church has lent me over the last few weeks. And that's been really good. It's been very effective. And if you've seen our Sunday morning services, you've seen I've got something clipped on. And uh, that's been really, really good. Um, it's a little wireless microphone, so I thought we could really use one of those. So I ordered one, and it was meant to arrive Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of last week. Uh, but then it arrived on... What day is today? It arrived yesterday, Tuesday of this week. Things are all delayed, aren't they? But I was so happy I got, I got the parcel that came through the post. It had come a long way, and here it was. And I opened it with anticipation. I was very excited because I've got lots of plans for the next couple of weeks how we're going to use this. And so it comes as um, two, little, two little microphones, two little things like that. They're so small, it's wireless, and uh, it's really, very effective. I mean, there's another one in there somewhere. You put one on here and you put one on your phone or your camera or whatever, wherever you want to put it, the receiver, and it's brilliant. It's got a great little microphone. And it comes with all the bits and pieces. It's got um, leads to charge it. It's got leads to connect it. It's got little uh, fuzzy things if you're doing outside. If you are watching whatever I was doing, a little tour of the UK outside the castles, I wish it had this with the fuzzy things to keep the wind noise down because it was very windy, wasn't it? Um, wonderful little, I think they call them dead cats. Cute, isn't it? <laughs> but I was so excited to get this with all the bits and pieces because I wanted to use it. In fact, I might have used it today. But you know something? I went to connect it to my phone and there was a piece missing. And I connected all this up because I thought maybe this little wire here was the wire that I was looking for. Um, but this wasn't it. Then I remember that the one that I borrowed from my friend had a different lead. So it's not that there was one missing from the package. Because all the bits and pieces that are meant to be in this are in this. But the piece that he had was an additional piece. But the problem is, I can't use this without that piece. We've got all the gear, all the equipment. This is quite expensive because this is top of the range, of course. But I couldn't use it because we didn't have that piece of kit, that cable, that little lead. It's only small. It's not very expensive. But we need it to make it work. Of course, Christmas can be like that, can't it? It can be full of all the good things. Anticipation. The gifts that we buy one another. All the good things about Christmas. The getting together. It's difficult these times. Because we're living through exceptional times, aren't we? But certainly, usually, we're with our friends. Families get together. We eat special food. Maybe you have a turkey. We buy one another gifts. And all those things are really lovely. But in themselves, there can be a piece missing. The piece that is the most important centerpiece of Christmas time. And for those of us who are Christians, we know who that is. We know that the centerpiece of Christmas is the Christ, the Christ child, Jesus. That beautiful story of that very first Christmas when God sent his son to the world. We've been thinking about that on Sundays. We're looking at the unexpected Christmas. And last Sunday we were looking at the unexpected birth. This Sunday we're looking at the unexpected place. But one of the things I said last Sunday was that Christmas time, the Christmas that we celebrate, isn't, isn't about a beginning. It's about a becoming. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Not a beginning. 
For Jesus has always been, he is the eternal Son of God, not a beginning, a becoming. God comes to us, takes on our flesh. It's the most amazing story, a story that you know well, a story we all know well, and yet a story that we can so easily take for granted. Because this is amazing, God became flesh. Can you take that in? I know I can't. God became flesh, like you and me, was born as a baby in a poor place, to poor for parents. Life was going to be challenging, very hard. But this is the great story of Christmas time, that God loved the world so much that he gave his son to you and me. We know that wonderful story. It is a supernatural story, the virgin birth and the angels and Joseph having dreams. It's a, it's a tragic story because Herod wanted to kill the new baby and there was a slaughter of the innocents. It's about people on the run, Mary and Joseph and Jesus going to Egypt so they wouldn't have to die. It's a wonderful story, a painful story. But a really beautiful story because it shows God's amazing love for you and for me. And if we leave Jesus out of this Christmas story that we're engaged in, whatever this, whatever it looks like for us this year, whether it's about family or friends or presents or food, all those lovely things, but if it's simply about those things and we forget about the Christ child, the one who came to the earth, God became flesh. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Wow, what has God done? He has shown us himself in his only begotten son, this Jesus. So how can we make sure that there's not a piece missing? How can we make sure that it will work this Christmas, that it won't simply about be it, doing all those other things? How can we make sure about that? Well, Paul tells us in, there's lots and lots and lots of verses you could use. But there's this lovely verse in Colossians chapter 3. And it's not Christmassy. It simply is what we should be doing all the time. Because Jesus isn't just for Christmas. It isn't just a nice little story. He is our life. He is our, as Paul says in Colossians, all in all. Wow. But Paul says this in Colossians 3. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Earthly things are good, of course. Our friends and food and celebrations are all good. But if we leave him out of it, then it's empty. So what do we do? You know, it's an act of a will, isn't it? We can get swept along with the season. We can get swept along with what we always do, our traditions. We can get swept along with what we want to do. And we can leave him behind. But we need to, as Paul says, set our minds. Make a decision not to do that. Think about him every day. Spend time, however long that might be, thinking about this Christmas story, thinking about the God who loved you, thinking about the Son who came, the image of the invisible God. He came because he loved you. Ultimately, he gave his life for you. He rose again and ascended and sits at the right hand of God the Father for you. Set your minds on things above, not simply on earthly things. Yeah, maybe you can find ways to do that with your family or by yourself. Think about how you do that. How do I put Jesus front and centre of this Christmas season? But of course, it's not just for the Christmas season. That's the question. That's the challenge for us every day. To practice the presence of God. To know that the Holy Spirit is within us. And he is. He's with you. You are the temple of the Spirit if you are a follower of Jesus. Set your minds on things above. It all begins here, doesn't it? Before it gets into our actions. It begins here. Set your minds on things above, not simply on earthly things. Jesus says, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. 
Where is our treasure? This Christmas time. This is a lovely time of year. We should, should celebrate. We should be with friends. We should exchange gifts. But we should and we must remember him. God became flesh. Got lost in the wonder of it all. Wow. So, the happy thing about this story about this is I can get a lead and I hope to get it tomorrow. It's not very expensive. And then I'm going to use it next week, next Wednesday. We're going to go out and about. We're going to go on tour with this fancy new microphone. Um, but it's no good without that missing piece. It is crucial. So, shall we pray together? Um, we'll ask the Lord to help us to set our minds on things above. Help us to enjoy all the good things of this world. Absolutely. That's what we're made to do. But they only become wonderful. We only really appreciate them when we set them in the context of a God who's a good God, who gives us good gifts, who gives us special times, who gives us family and friends, and who has given us the most wonderful, perfect, and indescribable gift of all when he gave his son. So let's pray. Father, we want you to be front and centre of our lives. Not just at this time of year, but always. Father, there's so many longings that we have, but often we can't, we can't make those longings happen. Maybe we're just lazy, preoccupied. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But Lord Jesus, we come to you and we say, would you help us? Would you help us to think on you? To spend time in your presence? To acknowledge your presence with us every moment of every day? In our work, in our rest, in our play, in our families, or when we're on our own, to acknowledge that you are our God and that you are with us. Father, would you help us? Father, thank you for Christmas time, which is a beautiful time of year. We thank you, Lord, for that first Christmas when you gave us your Son. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We thank you for that wonderful, wonderful Christmas story. Father, we thank you that we are part of that story. Good news. To all people on whom his favour rests. Father, help us not to lose sight of you, not to wander far from you. Hold us, Lord Jesus. Hold us. Father, we pray for those who may be watching this and are feeling isolated, unwell, alone, lonely. Feelings of hopelessness. Father, we pray against all of those things. We pray, Lord, that you, that you will bring hope where there is none. That you will bring courage where it's needed. We will bring healing where that is needed too. Lord, for those who are feeling distant, we pray that you will come close. We thank you that you're always the God who is close who comes close, who walks with us and talks with us. You are our God. You are our shield. You are our rock. You are our dwelling place. You are our God. And we're so happy that you are. Father, be glorified in our lives, in our churches, in the world. Father, we pray for our world at this time gone through COVID and vaccines and many other challenging things. Father, we know that you're sovereign. Please help people to look to you in these uncertain times. Help us to fix our eyes upon you. Bless those, Lord, who are working at the front line. Bless those who are in work and those who have lost jobs. 
be a blessing, Lord, to all. Thank you for your wonderful blessing that first Christmas when you sent your son, your only son, because you loved us. What a privilege. And so, Lord, we say thank you for your amazing grace and your wonderful love. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, thank you very much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Our service will be at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Um, it will be live streamed on Facebook Live. And it will be in, in our church, for those of you who come to our church. Just to remind those who are members of our church that the building is open tomorrow and each Thursday from 12 until 1 and from 7 until 8 where you can come along and just spend some time in the quietness and pray if you'd like to do that. Or anyone who's listened to that, you'd be very welcome just to come and spend time in our building praying to our amazing God. So, hope you have a wonderful day and maybe I'll see you Sunday. Turn will be back on Monday and I'll be here again on Wednesday. Okay, until then.